Hey, Karen. Yes. When you're not feeling well, what do you do? Um, I sit around not feeling well. I well, try to sleep. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But when you get really, when you're really not feeling well, what do you do? I mean, I don't know. It depends who, on how I'm not feeling. Who do you go see? Oh, well, I don't usually go see a doctor, even though I should. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Where most people, when they don't feel well, yeah. they go to a doctor. Yeah. Right. And then the doctor gives you medicine to help you feel better. Yep. And you're on your way. Mm -hmm. Except sometimes that medicine, boy, that medicine, it gives you some side effects, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So some people say that Eastern medicine is definitely the way to go instead. Mm -hmm. Now, we've even spoken to someone that's shared all the wonderful benefits of Ayurveda and all that kind of stuff, yep. right? Yep. But now we're hearing that maybe Eastern medicine is not always the best way to go for some people. Mm -hmm. So what do you do when neither Eastern nor Western medicine seems to fit the bill? You find the perfect combination. On this episode, we're going to answer just that once and for all. The eternal question, should Eastern or Western medicine be your exclusive go-to? My name is Will. And I'm Karen. And unlike Mulder and Scully, we both want to believe. So we've embarked on a journey of discovery. We've talked to people deeply entrenched in the spiritual and metaphysical world. We've thrown ourselves into weird and wonderful experiences. I even joined a coven of witches. And, wait, you joined a coven? Yep, all in the interest of finding something. Anything. That will prove that there's something beyond this physical. Three-dimensional world we all live in. This is The, the Skeptic, Skeptic Metaphysicians. Metaphysicians. Welcome to the Skeptic Metaphysicians. I'm Will. And I'm Karen. And today we're tackling the big questions. To help us navigate the tricky waters of East versus West, we have a shaman who's certified in acupressure sacral healing and is a Tibetan Reiki master. And she uses intuitive life guidance to channel the truth behind all the secrets of her clients' problems. Please welcome to the show, Amy J. Harris. Amy, so, so, so glad to finally have you on our show. We've <laughs> we've been in communication for a long, long time, mm -hmm. and you've been super engaged with us for a long time. So it's really wonderful to finally be able to see you face to face and say hello. So hello. It's my honor and pleasure. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me and then inviting me again. <laughs> and again, and again. And it has yeah, not been, course. in all fairness, it has not been on your end. It's been on ours. Uh, universe has, has conspired against us, and it almost conspired against us today, too. I but know. We push through and here we are. In here we are. All the gremlins. Mm -hmm. so. See, and sometimes that's all you have to do in life. I tell people if you really, really, really want something, um, I have a theory. It takes 11 times. If it's something you've decided you want, it takes 11 times sometimes. So don't quit on the 10th. So here we are in the 11th time. <laughs> okay. So you've been watching the show or listening to the show for a while yeah. and you've seen our Instagram post and you see my 11 11s. Is that why you're saying it takes 11 times? Is that like the same <laughs> no, no, no. It's my, like I said, it's my theory. It's my theory based on though. There is a basis. Uh, I did read maybe like a decade ago that it takes, uh, if you want to establish a habit like exercise or, you know, eating healthier, you have to do something 11 times uh, in order to establish a habit. I, so to me, a manifestation is a habit. And so if I want to manifest something, I give it 11 tries. If it hasn't happened by 11 tries, it's not meant to be. But most gotcha. of the time it is. Gotcha. <laughs> well, I love your answer, but I think I might like mine just a little bit more because, you know, it's a... <laughs> It's a little more cosmic. But. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, if you want to get cosmic, here we go with that, too. <laughs> uh, yeah, we are all about the cosmic. So when we spoke, you said that you've never had more downloads in preparation for any interview in your life. So I got to tell you, I'm super excited to hear what these downloads are. And since we're talking about Eastern and Western medicine, let's go ahead and tackle the topic. If okay. Eastern versus Western medicine. What makes the best type of medicine in your estimation? One word, both. Ah. I, will <laughs> I finally got one right. <laughs> so we're four minutes into the interview and already have given away all the answers. <laughs> yes, right. but if you just leave it there, there will be many, 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 many more questions. So we're going to get into that word, both. So Eastern and Western healing techniques must be used in tandem mm -hmm. for overall well-being. Mm -hmm. In the Eastern healing realms, we refer to Western medicine as allopathic. Um, their medical uh, pharmacology, 
These are allopathic medicines, allopathic techniques. We believe that they are treating symptoms, right? You go to the doctor and they say, what's wrong? And you come up with your laundry list of symptoms. And, and then what do they do? They take a guess, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> they say, yeah. oh, okay. Um, we think it's this. And then you get test A. And then if it's not that, you get test B, so on and so forth. And some people, unfortunately, will tell you they've had A through Z and they still don't know what's wrong. So my technique is a little different in the Eastern realm. In general, we say that we are healing at the cellular level. Um, And as a shaman, I'm not, you can tell me what your symptoms are. That's fine. But I am less concerned with the symptoms than I am with my intuitive or psychic empathing that happens in my treatment room, where literally I'm looking at the parts of your body before you even tell me what's wrong, because I feel the energy. There's a block here. There's a block there. Right. So we I think most people it's pretty mainstream by now. The word chi which is, you know, the energy of the body. And within the body, there are energy points and there are meridians. If you're familiar with acupuncture, Mm -hmm. I do acupressure. It's the same basis. I'm just not using needles. I'm using my fingers or elbows, you know, to make pressure points on the body. Hooray for no needles. (laughs) I know. know. That's why I was like, why I haven't gone to school to do like the thing that's covered under you know, health insurance, it would be nice, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I am not for needles, although I did a blood donation recently and saved a life. So that was exciting. But other than that, other than that, I don't really want to do needles. So I'm with you. Um, so we are not treating the symptoms as much as empathing what's going on, not just in the body, but I'm also very concerned with what the brain is doing. And um Pretty much everyone these days as well knows that it's very much mind over matter. People have healed their cancer just believing that they were going to heal their cancer. There are books on it all Mm -hmm. over the world. Mm -hmm. So I am very concerned with what is going on in your head when you're in my treatment room. If you've decided you have something and you're never getting rid of it, then guess what? You're never getting rid of it. (laughs) It doesn't matter what I do and it doesn't matter what the top surgeons in the world do. You will hang on to that sucker. Mm -hmm. Even if they alleviate the symptoms for whatever period of time, you will continue to have symptoms or you will resolve your symptoms temporarily and then down the line it will present itself again because you have incorporated that into your memory. It's what you want. You're not releasing it. So all of those things are concerning to an Eastern healer. Um, I can walk you through just basically, you know, what it would look like without showing you. I hope one day I'll be able to get one of you guys, if you swing by Pennsylvania, into my treatment room for a free treatment. Oh, wow. We were just there like (laughs) five years ago. But, but, you know, (laughs) I was so close. (laughs) You're due. You're due. So, you know, like I said, just like with Western doctors, they do come in, the clients, and they um, have their symptoms. So they start talking about them almost right away, even though they don't need to do that. Um, it is useful information. Uh, a lot of times they're coming to me because they have not had success mm-hmm. in uh, with doctors and hospitals and chiropractors, you name it. They've, they've done the insurance thing, and it's not happening. So they show up in my room. And, you know, they may even have had a little bit of improvement, but things are persisting. And so I will listen to what they say. I take it all in. It's information. But right away, I start to do this or I start to do this. And I'm already empathing that what they've gone through either mattered to some extent or didn't matter at all because that's not the problem. Like for just a brief example, even outside of my treatment room, my sister told me she had all kinds of issues. You know, I'm not going to tell you what they are, obviously, right? Confidentiality. But it was me who diagnosed the correct diagnosis because I was going like this the whole time she's telling me what the doctors were saying and what they were doing. I was like, no, 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 no. And I've known her my whole life. Right. So Mm -hmm. she's my younger sister. So I told her what it was. And, you know, she tends to family members tend in general not to believe me, you know, because I'm their family. (laughs) 
I don't really believe them either. That's fine. Like, right. fair is fair. So I said, just take it back. Take it back to the doctor. Let her do it. There's a test for that, right? Like, there's an app for that. There's a test for mm. that. Have them test it. Guess mm. what? I was right. So I'm batting a thousand so far with my clients and my family members on the things that are wrong that their doctors are not resolving. Wait, 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 wait. Um, I need to address that for a second. You're batting a yeah. thousand, which means you're a hundred percent accurate on so every far. Client that I mean, not like knock on wood, literally knock on everything. Um, yeah. so far that's where astounding. Everyone else is failing. I'm succeeding, but that's just because I mean, I I just brush it off because I I'm a psychic, right? So I get information that is from the universe. You can't you can't brush it. It's a hundred percent success rate. You can't just brush that off. That's that's remarkable, Karen. <laughs> We're we're headed to Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Yeah, <laughs> I need to get my back. We are <laughs> on our way. Are you kidding me? That's fantastic. Yeah, it's going well so far, right? Eleven years and a successful practice is good. So, wow. What I have them do is, and the nice thing about me is, you don't have to get naked. You keep your clothes on. Oh no, forget it. I'm not going to Pennsylvania. Then. That's hey fine. now. <laughs> <laughs> In my treatment room, you'll keep your clothes on and. Um, after we're having our little chat and, um, I'm doing some, probably some light Reiki after I've intuited what I think is going on. I'm now, my hands are moving like, you know, to your, um, energy points. I usually start with the crown and the throat. A lot of people have communication issues and have, you know, either, um, third eye blockages, headaches, things that are going on in this arena, um, where the crown chakra is expanding. We can get into that in a whole other podcast, but, but I start to do the Reiki and then I start to speak words in Sanskrit. And this, I believe initiates a direct channel, um, to ancient Tibet. And I am a Tibetan Reiki master. I went to get certified in what everyone gets certified in, which is Usui Reiki. Mm -hmm. And that's what everyone is, right? So that's what I thought I was doing. And the Reiki master who was training me said, uh, when she was attuning me at the end, she said, I'm being told to attune you as a, I'm giving you a double master. I'm attuning you to Tibetan Reiki. And I said, I don't even know what that is, but okay. I'm going to ask, what's the difference between Yusui yeah. method and the Tibetan method? Yusui is Japanese and Tibetan is Right. China, Tibet, it's, you know, it's, the, it's, it's a different it's, slight difference, right? But I mean, Tibetan is older, it is believed. Mm. Um, and so that goes right in line with Chinese medicine, 5,000 mm. years old. I do shiatsu acupressure. This all goes back 5,000 years. Wow. So it's it's believed to be older. I'm not going to go back and forth with people on it because I wasn't around at the time, either of those times. So who knows? <laughs> that you remember. <laughs> <laughs> Like Jesus Christ was a guy, right? But it did all those things happen? Did he walk on water? Maybe I wasn't there. <laughs> so the way I look at it is I I kind of I just laugh at it all. I'm like, yeah, this is all really old stuff. But when she said, You're gonna be a Tibetan Reiki master, I know that's different than what happens with everybody else in the class. And she saw a picture on her third eye of a fire serpent. So she said that was my uh, personal Reiki symbol. I don't even know I'm supposed to talk about that, but I don't care. I'm talking about it. <laughs> because it was want to know. Yeah, it was like, cool, you know, inquiring minds want to know. So that all happened. And um, so I do, I do uh, use that first because it's, it's a good way to, to just start to, as you said earlier, just massively download the information that I need to have a starting point. Mm -hmm. Because even though I heard about all the symptoms and all the things that were wrong, I don't necessarily believe it. I want to hear from their guides. We say guides, right? Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that for a minute. Everybody's definitions of guides are different, okay? Some people just have God. They are religious. God is where it's at. I love God, right? But I'm not under a particular dogma. I believe in God. I love the word. It's great. I believe in all gods for all people. <laughs> so, and thank God, <laughs> because... Right. In my treatment room, I, I literally have to listen to whatever guides show up. Okay. Mm -hmm. So maybe Jesus is showing up for that person because they've been just, you know, talking to Jesus their whole life. Like I get to talk to Jesus. That's cool. And, you know, like great. So it could be that. It could be their ancestors who have passed on. I've had ghosts come in. And I'll say, like my my long-term client, I said to her the last time I saw her, I said, Your grandmother's here. 
I said, um, this is the grandmother on your maternal side. I was specific about it. And she said, oh, yeah, well, she had this problem, too. And then I start to get other information, right? So now I know it's hereditary, which was not something that was offered. Mm -hmm. So these things start to, you know, the puzzle pieces start to fit together a little bit um, with the help of the guides. I really am grateful. And then is a wonderful guide. I'm going to stamp a little so you can see my belly, right? Right here in your gut you have your gut instinct. That's where your intuition comes from. Mm. Um, it is the third chakra, that nice yellow color, nice and yummy yellow, bright, um, where you are vibing things, right? Like you get a intuitive hit and you feel like it's this or that. So it's that express the expression you can't see the forest for the trees. Mm -hmm. So sure. that person cannot ask their own intuition what's up. They can't say, is that doctor right? Am I going the right direction? Because they're just, you know, nervous. They're stressed out about the condition. So I can, with the help of their guides and just my own natural born empath ability, connect the outer source to the inner source, which is what's going on in your gut. Okay. Your gut instinct and your inner, your inner voice basically. Mm -hmm. And I take those two things together and I give you a lot of information. Um, while this is going on, by the way, some words are coming. Sometimes they're coming in Sanskrit. Sometimes they're coming in English. Sometimes they're coming in whatever language they speak. I speak some semblance of 15 different languages, wow. three fluently, the rest of them just dribs and drabs, um, but I can give them words in various languages. Mm -hmm. So, and sometimes they come that way. So I have no choice. <laughs> um, they speak the word. When they speak to the word, and you'll know this from being attuned to Reiki, some, an attunement occurs. Mm. Something happens that shifts the brain around speaking that word. It starts to heal this area where you may not have been able to tell people what's going on with your ailment. Maybe you're embarrassed. Maybe you really just don't know how to go about it. Whatever any of that is, that starts to heal. The ability to speak on it is so important. To be vulnerable about it if you want people to help you mm. is vital. So all of that starts to heal. And then I will start to move on after they've spoken a word or two um, to where I believe these pressure points are, the various areas in the body that are needing some release so that the energy can move and flow better. You intuit a lot of these things and then you start kind of a treatment process, but then you send them to their Western medicine to get confirmation and then do they come back to you or do or, or yes. do you expect them to get medicine to help ease the symptoms while they're so, waiting for you to cure them? Good question. They come back to me. I, I ask them to come back to me because I want, I'm waiting for the day when someone says I'm wrong because then I get to learn more, right? <laughs> like I really just want to learn. Mm. So yes, please come back and tell me. They do come back and tell me um, because I, even though maybe the Western medical doctors are not looking at me as anything important, right? The client is. Mm -hmm. And I want to know what they say. If I'm wrong, then we got to figure something out because the doctors haven't figured it out. Right. So then I have to go a little bit deeper and see what's happening. I, I, I'll update you on when that happens. If that happens. Yeah. Um, so far, they just go back to the doctors and the doctors go, all right, well, I mean, I don't think so, but we'll test for that. And then it comes up correct. So, you know, when when that happens, that's beautiful. All I've done really is facilitated the getting quickly to the answer, which saves everyone money, right? <laughs> like Man, the whole right. industry that's benefits pain. from that. Yeah, yeah. frustration and yeah, mm -hmm. oh, absolutely. Yes. Yes. So everybody just gets a little bit of um, assurance that something is happening, like we're moving mm -hmm. towards a solution. And, you know, the again, again, with, you know, insurance, you're saving money on on all ends, which is so important right now. Since it's intuitive, 
And we've learned over X amount of interviews that energy has no boundaries. Is this something that you could do from like, do we have to go to Pennsylvania or could you just do it right now? I mean, we won't do it right now. Well, come on. We could do it at a future time. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> because I'm not really set up. Like, as you know, you know, this isn't exactly how we thought we were going to be doing this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So right. the, it's the room is not set up, right? I would have to set everything up in the treatment room. Um, I do have my nice little acupressure chart behind me there. Oh, that side. Sorry. Opposite. I guess Hold you up. can't do pressure remotely. Right, that's a good point. I do these things on Zoom. Okay. So I do oh. it remotely because what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the points. Oh. And I'm going to say, I'm going to need you to put this finger here or this elbow there. Mm. Yes. So I do it remotely and then they can um, kind of go back and keep doing that to themselves yes because even when they're in my treatment room i always send them away with homework and some of the homework is here's the point i want you to squeeze on your ankle when you're watching tv so um that is important to me that i allow the client to continue to heal themselves mm-hmm. i don't like this idea of what we do and i go to western doctors when necessary I don't like that I leave and I'm just waiting to hear yeah. <laughs> on what what's happening. Okay. It's a terrible feeling. So I'm going to get on Google and I'm going to start to look and I'm going to open my acupressure book and the whole nine yards of all of my tools and say, let me start channeling myself. Let me start bounce things off somebody else. If I'm ha- if I'm stressed and having trouble doing it, I'll call a fellow psychic, whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to start to take matters into my own hands. Nobody should feel like they don't have control over their body, right? Their own body. Like I want people to heal themselves. Anything that I can do to facilitate the healing process, whether it's in my room over a zoom call or just you on your own drinking lemon, ginger water, taking a bath with Epsom salts to detox, I have lots of stuff that I can tell you to do that's really, really simple that anyone can do. Mm-hmm. I am not, I have not taken a Hippocratic oath. <laughs> I do not have to follow certain protocols and rules that keep the whole thing extended out forever. Mm-hmm. If you never come back and see me again, that's great. <laughs> that means I solved your problem. I don't need you to come 500 times. I don't want that for you. I do have long-term clients. They're holding on to it. That's fine because there's a lot of stuff going on in the head as well that we're trying to resolve. If you're familiar with Louise Hayes, you can heal your life. Of course. Yeah. That's one of the books I use. She's great. Right. So yeah. sometimes we've released the physical issue, but there's so much going on psychologically. And if I feel it may persist, then I'm getting into that book and I'm going to give them pictures of what's in my book from Louise Hay and say, here's your mantra. Here's your affirmations. This is what you need to be saying, thinking, writing on a sticky note, you know, sticking it to your dashboard like I do, write in in lipstick on your mirror, whatever it takes to really get it into your brain. You know, I've always wanted an excuse to write lipstick on my mirror. So this might be the perfect excuse. Oh, there are so many comments I could make right now, but no, I'm let's... not going to. So anyway, Amy, what were you saying? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe by the end of the show, I'll come up with something for you. You never know. We'll see what happens. <laughs> so um, I do get into the acupressure chart um, this way, right? This way behind me. Acupressure <laughs> chart. You can see part of it. Um, it. It is based on ancient Chinese medicine. There are five elements that are dealt with wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. Mm. So on the chart as well, there are also affirmations. There's some poetry. There are things that I can read to the clients. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. But really what I'm doing is I'm honing in on these points that I need to hit. So, you know, like my last client, I was like, okay, GB34. I don't have them all memorized. I haven't been doing this my entire life. So if I get empathically that it's LV8, so that's liver and GB34 is gallbladder. Now I've got to go and look. I don't have all the points memorized, but Mm. what I do have are guides that I can open and see what's going on and what points I have to hit. 
And I'm always right about the general vicinity, but I have to make sure that I hit the point that an acupuncture needle would hit. This is very specific stuff. Mm -hmm. So I will go to that chart. I will find the point and then sometimes I'll read them a passage or not and just get right in there and put very, very firm pressure. And then I start to use some techniques in Shiatsu massage, which is really just shaking up the chi in the body, moving things around and getting the release that we're looking for. And I'll see like their body parts jump, things move. So this is how I know that it's working. Mm. And then more times than not, that leads me to the next point. And so my gaze will go to like the complete opposite side of the body in some random location. I'm like, okay, I'll go down there. Now I start to use Reiki again, okay, to find the exact point. There's the area back to the chart. There's a lot of movement going on while these guys are just completely blissed out. Some of them fall asleep entirely. Some of them um, are there, but not entire, like not really. They're sort of in between where they are um, maybe like in a meditative state. Mm -hmm. I could bring them back. I mean, I have this guy here to just illustrate what I need to do. Sometimes if I have to talk to them, you know, like. We do our little, if, you're, if you've ever gone to a, you know, place that uses our little, uh, a little singing bowl or for me, I just ting it and, and, and Hey, come on back kind of thing. Like the harmonic egg. They, 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 oh my God. That was the best episode. I love that. That was amazing. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> so much fun. So you guys are great. So yeah, you do the little ting and you want to keep them there if you don't want them completely if they're asleep sleep is one of the most healing things that can happen so if someone's body is in severe distress if they broke something if they have cancer a chronic ailment or injury then i am so happy to just put them to sleep let them heal and do the work without any talking or anything just let them rest because oftentimes at home they don't let themselves there's just too much going on there's too many people there's too much in their head of what they have to do they're get it basically buying an hour of time to take care of themselves and do nothing. So if their body needs sleep, I let them sleep. Sure. Sure. Sometimes no. they're completely awake and they're talking back and they're saying, Hey, I see this on the inside of my third eye. What does that mean? And I'm like, okay, well, let's talk about that. Cause I saw this instead. So how do we connect those two? So it's a fascinating thing that happens when you do stay awake. So if you do come to my treatment room, I mean, I'd love one of you to completely bliss out. And the other one to be talking to me. It would be wild, you know? So I would bliss out. And no, Karen would no, be talking me. to you. I want the bliss. <laughs> it just, I'm talking track record, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what happened in the egg? Now, have you done the egg well, or was it just Karen that did yep. the egg? No, we both did you, it. You yeah. both did it. Okay, yeah. 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 I, I caught yours, Karen, but yeah. I missed Will's. Karen did it um, a lot. I've done it three times. Yeah. She did oh. it a lot, whereas I've only done it once. But. Oh, it was good for you then. Very good. Very okay, good. good. Yeah. Love yeah. it. Shockingly good. I, so. I hope I'm going to get to do that one day. But so, so, so then you you go to you, you get all this stuff, then you get your Western confirmation. At what point? Because you got a hundred percent accuracy rate. At what point do you, Amy J. Harris, go? Okay, you don't, you don't, you no longer have to go to a Western medicine doctor to confirm so, Chinese because I know after eleven years that I got this. So never because. The word was both in the beginning. The right, right. But well, have I, to would be never, I would never tell anyone not to use everything at their disposal ever. Um, because I, I don't know everything. I don't know. Even if I'm, you know, 100% accuracy, I don't know everything. I don't know. I'm 11 really years of 100% accuracy says kind of that you might know a whole lot of stuff that maybe, I, I mean. I don't know everything. Is the accuracy diagnosing or is it also healing? Well, Wow. Okay. I like it. So <laughs> the diagnosis is a hundred percent accuracy. The healing, some people are ongoing. So mm -hmm. I, it, I, I, I am not Jesus Christ. Like you're healed. Right. Well, right. I, I mean, nice. You go out the door like yeah. that. I'm not Jesus because if I was, I'd be dead. I'd be, you know, like, like I'd be the guy in the room. So then you're, you're older than 33 years old. And obviously, <laughs> <that way. laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> The day 33 was maybe 50, right? I don't know. Right, that's right. true. But, that, but then we've, we've also heard from people, Karen, that that some people just don't want to be healed, even though they say oh, they want to. True. Sometimes they just don't, and Ooh. this is a prolonged thing. So, um, and that's what I was touching on earlier, right? So in their head, they're hanging on to it. 
Mm-hmm. I hear somebody all the time saying the same thing over and over and over again. And I very gently have to say, you let me know when you're ready to release that, but I'm not going to be one of the hundred other people that listens to you say this ad nauseum because I am here to help. And it drives me absolutely insane that I know that I can help you and you don't want to release it. So Mm -hmm. thank you for that. It's never going to go if you don't want it to go. And just talk to Louise, hey, or read her book. (laughs) It's all about that. Like, you've got to get it out of your head. Um, As I said in my last podcast, the brain is a computer. Mm -hmm. Right. If you have a problem in the computer, you reboot your computer sometimes, right? (laughs) Completely shut it down, start it right back up. Same concept. Shut down that thought. Cancel, delete out of the head. Let's have a different thought, something positive. It always has to be positive. It doesn't really even matter what the thought is about it. Find something good about it. There is something good in everything. Every human being will tell you that there is something good to be found in every bad situation. Sometimes you don't see it until later. Mm -hmm. Find the good now (laughs) because Mm -hmm. if you're sick and you want to get better, find the good. Find something positive about it or at least a way to flip a switch, as I say, and rewire your brain to get yourself away from that. I think part of the problem might be that some people are, they they have this negative, whatever thought or whatever, so ingrained into their self-conscious that they don't even realize they have it. They have that feeling of, well, I don't deserve to feel healthy or I deserve this pain, whatever, without even realizing that they have that feeling. You've got it. So that's where I come in and I do get a little stern sometimes. I got to admit. Sometimes I say things like, I don't like what you're saying. Stop it right now. (laughs) Um, They laugh, you know, and I'm just like, no, but I'm dead serious. I don't want to hear you talk that way because you talking that way means I can't even take your money today because there's not a single thing I'm going to be able to do for you. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask you to stop with the negative self-talk and the hanging on to this thing because it can go away. And I remind them, hey, you've heard the stories and you've read the books or whatever that people have healed themselves from cancer just by eating right and deciding they don't have cancer anymore. So if we all know that these stories are true, then your thing that is not cancer is definitely resolvable, okay? So let's move away from this hanging on to, as Karen said astutely, of uh, even even familial garbage, right? Somebody's like, well, and and I said it earlier, shame on me. That's hereditary. Now I never speak that to the client, but I'm intuiting it, right? I'm, I'm no, okay. It happened with the mother, but that doesn't mean it has to happen with her. So I'm not going to say that's hereditary the way a doctor wants everything to be hereditary. Oh, it's so much easier if everything's hereditary. Well, what good is that? Like we gotta, we gotta break the cycle. (laughs) We gotta stop it. Right. Right. So the importance of really everything that I'm doing um, regarding Eastern healing in tandem with Western medicine, um, what we're trying to do is create not just resolution of symptomatic problems, but future resistance to disease. If I can clear the energy channels in the body and start the healing process at the cellular level and give you homework to continue the healing process on your own. That is going to increase your ability to fight things off Mm. and resist anything that might be trying to get in the future. <laughs> and, and I want to go back to a point you made a, just a second ago that finding something that's good about whatever you, it is you're going through. Remember Wayne Dyer. Love Wayne Dyer. Oh my gosh. One of my f- absolute favorite teachers, uh, really, because that's what he is to me. Is a, Such is a, a good guru. Yeah, absolutely. He mentions that sometimes disease, dis-ease actually comes in because you're supposed to learn something from it. And I can tell you from firsthand experience that I have a chronic illness. I've been diagnosed with something that really opened up my eyes and jump-started my search. And that's my good thing, right? Because no one wants this thing, but the universe gave me a wake-up call, like knocked me on the head and said, hey, stupid, pay attention. You need to change the way you live your life or or you're going to go down the wrong path. So 
sometimes it's hard because at first you you look at it and you go, oh my God, why me? This this is not fair. And then you go, oh, I get it now. And to your point, then you start making some changes and all of a sudden life completely turns around. So Yes. And you found the positive in it, which is what we were talking about earlier. Absolutely. Um, it's just like I say, my example for that with clients is very simple. A tree fell on our house during Hurricane Ida. And I knew horrible things happened outside. And I said to my husband, "You, I know you're going to go look, but I don't want to hear anything about it until the morning. It was dark. I'm like, oh, okay. So my mind will start to think all kinds of things because I can't see what's going on, right? Mm. Forget it. I said, you go look and stress out. I don't want to hear about it. I'm going to bed. So I went to bed and I woke up the next morning and I, it was still kind of dark out. So I, I busted out the insurance policy and I read everything. I was prepared. I was like, whatever I'm about to see, which of course, you know, being psychic, I kind of knew my car was toast. I knew the shed got hit. I thought part of the house got hit. All of that was right, unfortunately. Um, but, but without confirmation, who knows? I'm, not, I'm on that path. I don't see pictures all the time. Okay. So I'm not hundred percent accurate there. So I get outside and I go like this. I love your story because it went like this for me. I looked at the tree that fell on the shed car was gone <laughs> and I looked how the branch was impaled in the side of the house and I went like this thanks God <laughs> and I started laughing <laughs> and I was like mm, let me think thanks for what thank you for whatever's coming something good good's coming from this okay something's good all right I was like yeah something good's coming so you see how you start to mess with your mind right you start to move your mind into what you don't even know the positive is yet. You just make a decision that you're not going to go into a crumpled heap and cry, or you're not going to start yelling at the dog because you're stressed out or whatever, like all the other things that you could do that are horrible things. You could just decide it's good. And then you step forward blindly, right? And you trust the universe, God, and whoever your guides are. And you say, let's see. So within a day, we found out how much money we were going to be getting. And I was like, oh, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> like we started Googling like what the value of the car was because everybody wants cars now. And um, we were like, set. <laughs> so I said, this is good because we had an extra car and, and we can do without that car. And guess what? We're still doing without that car. And now all these months later, because that was September 1st with the gas prices the way they are. Oh, I'm so happy. I didn't run out and get another car. <laughs> like that's how you start to look at things, right? So back to your ailment, whatever it is, doesn't matter. You decided there was something good there. You were going to latch onto the good. And you are going to grow from that good. I bet you have learned so much. And you know what? I believe the most important thing is that you've probably learned. Please correct me if I'm wrong. That you can now talk to other people who have that. You can say, hey, I'm that. Or I've been there once you've resolved it. I'm going through that. Don't worry. There are really good things involved here. Here's what I've done. If they're open to it, right. it's really nice. I mean, at 50, I've had a lot of stuff go wrong so far in my life. And when someone comes in and they go, I got like nine times out of 10, I've had it, or I've had something, you know, similar to it, or I know somebody who's been through it. And that's what it's really all about. When we step out of ourselves and we say, I'm going to be vulnerable. I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to say, I got this going on. Like for me, it's PTSD. It was a long time before I could tell everybody I had PTSD <laughs> like that from childhood abuse. I had to go through a lot to get there mm. to be able to speak it. So if you can get to a place where you can say, I've got this, you know, like mental illness going on or physical illness or whatever it is. And um, you would be shocked at how many people come out of the woodwork saying, I have that too. I'm going through the same thing. And then you're holding hands in your wellness journey. And that's yeah. a big deal. So I've not gotten yet to the point where I speak of it openly. I, as you can tell, because I didn't mention it here. But, yeah, but I think primarily great. the reason for that is because of my daughter. I don't want her to worry. So we keep it no. very, very close. Lit. A good time. Like I said, it took me forever to get to that point. People that are, that are close to us do know. And it's not that I'm trying to hide it, but it's just not something that I go around telling people. You're just not ready yet. Do not ask the soul to do something it's not 
ready to do yet. And that's the other thing that we really haven't touched on yet is yes, the mind, yes, the body I'm healing. I'm speaking to spirit because really just, you're just supposed, like, we're not supposed to be here suffering. We really aren't. So we need to harness our like happy free girl, happy free boy spirit from childhood before the whole world came in and told us who, what, where, why, when in terms of behavior and just really say, you know what, I'm supposed to be like having an enjoying life. Like, well, you know what? I don't want to like be miserable all the time. Let's have some fun. And then I'll just go skip down the road or whatever to remind myself that I'm still that inner child. I'm very, 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 very attached to my inner child. And she had so much fun. She climbed trees and she painted without caring what anyone thought of how it looked. And, you know, she didn't have to be the perfectionist that her 50 year old counterpart part is. And so that's the most important thing I think that, you know, is the end game of all of these life experiences is if you can circle back to um, what makes you happy in life and attach to that, a lot of these things will resolve on their own just from the pure joy of living. If you can get yourself to a place again where you're just having a good time in life mm -hmm. and give the stressors their due, that's fine. Put them in like box B. But box A should be like, what makes you happy? Like, why are you here? You know, what are you, who are you? Like, are, stop being a human doing. Like, B, you're a human being, right? Mm -hmm. You're not a human doing. We're doing all the time. So just stop and be and connect to your inner child and play. I, what do you play? I love that. I am going to get a t-shirt that says, I am not a human being. I was thinking that too. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's I, fantastic. I, I love that. <laughs> oh, that's a good segue into what we were talking about earlier with my books, right? So <laughs> like get together yeah. and do like fun stuff like that. Yes. So actually, now that you brought it up, let's, let's talk about your book, uh, which I know has been completely sold out of Amazon, right? It's called... Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. The Truthful Intuitive Guide to Life Everlasting. Yes. Right. That's it. And so, so what is that book about? Well, that book is a concise guide. There are 21 different topics of, it's been described as sort of all the different pieces of your personality puzzle. So it, it says, uh, all true manifestors know. And, and then there's a page about manifestation and it's a think, speak, act format. Okay. So there's like a, on the left page, there is a meditation, a beautiful picture that is meditative, and then a little bit of prose with it, something to think on, which creates the text on the right side, something that the topic, how to think about manifesting, how to speak about manifesting, the affirmations you would use when you want to bring something into your reality. And then what it looks like when you manifest that. Mm -hmm. So that's just one example of uh, the many different topics there. And I still use it. It is a really great guide. It, I People write books, you know, they think that you're experts and you write a book and you're an expert. But sometimes when you're psychic, you write a book because your spirit needs the information. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's sometimes. how I write. I write all the time. All my books yeah. are written that way. Like I'm not always calm, you yeah. know, and I need to open my book and say, all right, I need like a meditation. And it's one of those books where you just open to a random page. and It's the thing you need to know that day. It's always the thing you need to know. It's wild. So, um, you know, you work on that one thing. And then so all of the overwhelmingness of life is boiled down to one page is <laughs> so nice. So that's Tigal, as I call it affectionately. It's the acronym for the book. Um, and it is sold out. However, I have a, a little personal stash and I just adore you guys. So, well, you know, when we talked about doing a little thing together, I thought, Ooh, I can like bust out my personal stash and you know, it's guarded away. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not doing another, another, uh, for the printing printing. Thank you for the word. There's mm -hmm. another word I was going to use, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm not doing it again. Because I'm writing The Ascended Master, and that's a book, 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 book. It's going to be an amazing novel. So in the meantime, we can take these books and offer them to your audience. Oh, well, yeah. So, so let me just get this straight. This book, this sounds incredible. You can no longer get an Amazon, but you have a stash that you are willing to sell to people who listen to the show. 
and they're able to get this amazing book that you wrote directly from you. Is that right? Directly from me. Correct. Yeah. I will. And I'm just selling a list price, nothing crazy, um, just as is, or we can, which is $20 plus shipping and handling, or we can do um, a personalized where I inscribe it if it's a gift for someone and I will gift wrap it with these two Reiki hands. Oh, I could even include a crystal. I like that idea. Ooh, a Reiki infused crystal for the low, low price of $30 plus shipping yeah. and handling. Wow. Very and nice. I will offer a limited number of copies just because, I mean, the, this show is amazing. What you guys do, I'm so honored to be here and so grateful that you exist in the world. Thank you. Well, thank you. That's oh incredibly God. kind of you, not just for the words that you use, which make us feel really good, but also mm -hmm. for this amazing, amazing thing that you're doing for our audience. So thank you so That's much. Awesome. I know that you're going to sell at least one of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We'll do the $30 package. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. So anyone who's listening in, if you're as excited as I am about this book, we, we as excited <laughs> as we are about this book, how, how does someone go about taking advantage of this offer? Can't they contact you directly? Are, are there ways to contact you? Let's do it that way. Absolutely. Um, and y'all can let me know. You can reach out and say, hey, you know, I have this listener since you're you're more connected to them than I am at the moment. Um, you can give me, they can give you their information and, and, you know, then we can go about it that way. I'm sure it's, it's going to be that simple. I have a website, but I'd rather run it through you guys. So you guys are aware that, you know, people are ordering it through you. I think that's just the, the safest way to do it. Okay. Well go to our show notes and hit the link that we'll put in there. If you want to order the book from Amy, we can certainly pass along your information to her directly or go to skepticmetaphysician.com. We'll add the link there as well so that you can take it. Yeah, because you guys have like a little shop where you sell stuff too, don't you? We do. We have a little merchandise store. Things like yeah. That. So, awesome. Uh, this has been fascinating. And Amy, thank you so, so, so much. It's, it's been an absolute pleasure finally meeting pleasure you for me face to face. If you are interested in getting her book, The Truthful Intuitive Guide to Life Everlasting, please reach out to us and we'll be happy to get you connected with that book. Once again, thanks so much, Amy, for coming along. On Love this you guys. Journey. Love you right back. And thank you for coming along on this journey of discovery with us as well. We'd love to continue our conversation with you on our website or on Facebook and Instagram. You can find us there at Skeptic Metaphysician, Skeptic Metaphysician Podcast. You can always reach us at skepticmetaphysician.com, of course. And if you're listening to this on the radio and you missed something, not to worry. All of our shows, including this one, can be found on our website. Again, skepticmetaphysician.com. Right there, you can also watch the videos or send us email or voicemails directly from the site and subscribe to the show directly on the site as well. We absolutely love feedback and would appreciate hearing from you as well. Well, we hope you enjoyed the episode as much as we have. That's all for now, but we'll see you on the next episode of The Skeptic Metaphysicians. Until then, take care. Take care.